Good morning, Steve Robinson. <laughs> my name's still David Robinson, and I'm here to talk about KDE and one of our main products, Plasma, which just had a new release, Plasma 5. So before we get started on this question, why doesn't Next work? <laughs> <laughs> I think it was the arrow. Maybe. Okay, it's good, it's all good. We don't make PowerPoint software. Oh, it's part of Plasma. So what is it? KD started off as a Linux desktop environment, and now we need to understand what a desktop environment is. And the easiest way to, look, to understand that is to look at some other operating systems. So when we think of Windows, we think of this. It's blue, there's a clock in the corner, and it looks like that. OS X, because they're creative, the clock's in the top. <laughs> and there's a spacey background, which gets very exciting. But when you think of the three major operating systems, we have Windows, OS X, and of course Linux. And Linux looks like this, which is somewhat more <laughs> underwhelming. <laughs> Arguably, it's quite similar to a space background of OS X, <laughs> but without the stars. Space at night. Um, and this is because Linux doesn't draw anything. It doesn't do anything visible. It talks to hardware, it allows developers to do things. It exposes the concept of files and how to talk to your webcam, but it doesn't do anything. And that's by design. You'll see Windows and OS X have exactly the same thing underneath when they have a kernel which is doing this hardware talking. But because they package it all up and they don't have this open development, you don't really see these different layers. So in Linux, we have Linux, and then we layer things on top. So from Linux, we go to a phrase you might have seen, good news slash Linux. And what's changed is we now have a tiny dollar in the corner, <laughs> and they're very proud of this. <laughs> so make sure you refer to, to it as GNU Linux to include this symbol. <laughs> and that allows you to have a text-based interface. But that's not still not really on par with the Windows and the OS X screenshots we saw before. So on top of GNU slash Linux, we have invisible middleware stack, which doesn't change anything because it's invisible. <laughs> But on top of that, we can put our software. So this is Linux, GNU Linux, plus the invisible middleware stack. Pardon? And, uh, and when we have this stack, and we have KDE Plasma on top, so we can see some, some applications, part of KDE. And what we are seeing with Windows and OS X, we have a clock and a panel and the start menu and a way to launch apps. If we think of what we expect from an operating system, we expect a pretty background, which may or may not be space. We expect a clock, fairly important. We expect an app launcher, a way to actually start applications, which is probably why you turned a computer on in the first place, not just to look at your background. And we also expect some sort of system administration, so being able to configure uh, your hardware, configure your drivers and stuff, and configure how you use your system. We expect a lock screen, we expect a login screen, we expect the system monitor to close applications and a way to switch between tasks and a way to drag your different windows about. If you've got your different applications, we need to use a visible way to switch between which application we're actually using. So we expect all of that and we expect to turn it back from a standard operating system. So, a brief history. So we're going back to around the time of S11. Yeah. The best joke on, on this slide. I expect the better, to be honest. It's downhill from here. So, brief history. 1995, around the time of Windows 95, uh, in Linux existed. We had a graphical world. We had various applications and various different ways of moving Windows, but it was very fragmented. Different toolkits, different people, different teams working on different things. There was no common good coherent vision, and there was no GUI for doing new system administration. Lots of resulting back to samples. So in 1996, the TSX Rich creates KDE, which is a community with the idea of making all of the graphical user software that you might have on top of that invisible stack to create something on par with Windows and OS X, <coughs> or OS X at the time, which didn't exist. So, the future from 1996 to now, we have one unified perfect Linux desktop. And following the giggles, you know, that hasn't quite happened. 
So in the current living festival state, there's three major environments. We have GNOME, <coughs> Unity, I expected to cheer. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, and we have the uh, KD software stack. <laughs> Someone sounded like they were haunted. <laughs> <laughs> the ghost of KD software. <laughs> And then there's your forks on top of that. And there's lots of tiny desktop shells which have the things to move a window, but it's not really offering a complete s everything you would expect from an operating system. Which, there's really only a few which offer a complete experience, particularly with applications as well. So that brings us to KD Plasma. So KD, we make both applications, and we make this desktop shell. Yeah menu and uh, wallpaper and the clocks and such. So we've got a large divide between the two because these applications run everywhere. You can run an application made by KDE on GNOME. But it still use various different shells which are providing us desktop parts. And we call it desktop part plasma. So that's what KDE plasma is. KDE community, community making a desktop shell and we're making applications. The graph showing this up. Uh, so we make some libraries as well, which are used by various other people, we make applications, and we make Plasma. So Plasma is everything graphical that isn't an application, to give a one-line summary. And I'm here to explain why it's best, from my totally unbiased viewpoint, from a KD developer. Main demo. I can be both. So why it's useful, why I like using it, is because it provides tools for me to work harder on the things I'm doing. When I was a university student, KDE allowed me to work faster at the stuff I was meant to be doing. And that's what you want from a computer. So we have fast launching. I can just type, search, type a word in, and it will list all the different applications and files and emails that we might want to actually use. So you're not going to search for your files. We have a small process which is looking through all of the files, looking through all the emails. So you can quickly type the word, look through the things I want to find. Is there something you want to share with the rest of the class? <laughs> uh, we have, uh, my, clearly my, my web browser bookmarks are finding bugs in the class. So, not, that's not what we don't. But we have this fast launching, just type in a word, you find it. And you can see OSX copying us on that, before us. And we have multiple desktops, you can move Rather than putting lots of windows in the same place, you can click and drag them around into these large different spaces and zoom out and manage your windows. So it's a lot easier to focus on one task at a time. You can even put it on an awesome animated rotating cube, which is awesome. <laughs> and something we have in, in Plasma, which is unique, is we have this concept of activities where you can load up a set of applications and then pause all of those applications in their current state save it, close them, release the memory, and then at another day, when you want to go back to editing this set of files, this set of applications, you can restore all of these applications at once in their current state, which is quite a cool feature that we're not seeing in any other environment. And we've got the desktop, we can bring this concept of applications and blend them into the desktop. So here we have an instant messaging client, which I got. And We've got this traditional application look, with the application style, but we've also got my contact list, my list of my friends, I have friends, on the desktop, and I can chat with them directly, just from the panel. Every time we get a little message, little notification, like you see on Facebook or Google+, but we're not having, a, having to load up a separate app. It's not interrupting your workflow for you to do different tasks, which is awesome. Plus, you can customise everything. Plasma is easily your most customisable desktop environment app. So, we can add widgets. It's very important to add post-it notes on your desktop, because otherwise you get glue on your monitor. So we have these various widgets. We can add, we can have timers, um, ways to drag and drop things. Uh, this one, with a little clipboard, you drag a file there and it will upload it to a sharing service which is useful. So you can add widgets, and you can do that on some other desktops, but we can do it here. That's only really scratching the surface of customization. This is what we ship by default, with Plasma 5. 
which is quite a nice tidy theme. But I can make it look like RSX. I can drag the panels to the top, add a clock and a spacey background. And we've got this OSX looking um, environment just by dragging a few things around. And by changing the themes, we can make it look like Unity. And we see all of the widgets are updating to match this theme. It's all still coherent amongst all the different widgets, but it's looking like when we have a different desktop environment because everything is themable, everything is changeable from loading SVGs for all of the backgrounds. So just replace one of them, get this new different theme. And on top of just replacing a the theme, we can also change the way the panels are aligned and we can change the lock screen and the locking screen and all the other different parts that form Plasma simply by just swapping a few files around. So here's what it looks like now, if someone's created a new theme and a new style. This one's quite nice, someone's littered it with widgets, someone's very interested in the web and view the best. And it's, it's got this new glassy theme which we, is very different to what we have by default on Plasma which is white, silvery, this is glossy and transparent. So very different visual styles. And this one looks quite nice, you can't really see what the projector, but it's this glassy green theme. Which we're just looking around, there are 80 different different themes on KD Look, one of our websites for downloading new themes. So it's something that our artistic community really seem to enjoy doing. And it's quite easy to install them, it's just one button, get new themes, have a browse, look for one with a good rating, you can install it. And you can really change the look of your desktop if you like tweaking things. And this one's not just about tweaking a visual style, we've changed where it would just be a wallpaper, we've added some content into it. So the main part of the screen, we call it a containment, and it could show icons like you have on Windows, it could show nothing, or it can show, in this case, someone's customised it to be a sort of searching, launching part with a search box. So you can just modularise all your different parts and replace it individually. So someone's got a bit creative, so it's clearly for someone with a small screen, they want to maximise their real estate and have a slightly ugly looking desktop. So I want to talk about my personal favourite features of Plasma and of some of the KDE integration that we have with our applications. And these are just my personal favourite things, other people might have different ones. So my, one of my favourite things is easy network transfers. You can just copy something to an FTP server without launching a different app. You just open a file manager, type in an address, click and drag. And that's really awesome. It's powerful features, which you don't have to load different applications for. Another one, that's my personal favourite, you can just open a terminal in your file manager, and as you change directly in the file manager, the terminal changes. And as you change directly in the terminal, the file manager changes. So it kind of blends its concepts of advanced and simple. So you can use all the features from one and blend them into another, which I find really, really useful. And it's one of the more services we have repeating over Plasma 5 in our development of simple by default, powerful when needed. And it's a good mantra to have, because it really, I don't want to be fiddling with difficult features most of the time when I'm trying to work, but it's nice to have them available. So this is a quite a hidden feature, you have to press a shortcut or search around the menus. But when you know it's there, you can really, really speed up your productivity. And you can configure absolutely everything. We can change what shortcut we use for copy, and it will affect all of the applications across the entire system at once. We this concept of everything being unified, which is something we really do well in Plasma. And my favourite thing, and we're really striving to a platform fly, is everything just works. You plug in a screen, assuming the cable fits, and it will just work. You want to connect to a network, and it will just work. You can click your CLS or your Wi Fi point, you click on one, you grip one for a password. It just works. And something we're really striving for to try and improve that. And it's something I think we have down in Plasma really well at the moment. But it's still room for improvement. There's some notable users of Plasma, just to show off. Pixar user, which is exciting. It's used in the Hobbit as well. There are developers who do a CGI, they use KD Plasma. It's used by CERN. So people more intelligent than me, doing clever things. Every school 
Probably not much to tell. Every school can be able Uses plasma. Or uses KDE. It's a slightly older version. But they use it. Every German embassy, so that's 11,000 computers, all running plasma. So if it's good enough for a German embassy. 11,000? Yeah. That's what Wikipedia says. 283 countries. Yeah. yeah. They have more than one computer at that office. A lot of people will not end up. Can I use a computer now? Maybe that's why getting a visa takes so long. <laughs> Me. I'm slow. I've heard a rumour it's used by Pizza Hut in their headquarters. I don't know if that's true, but I want it to be true. By who? Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut. Huh? Pizza Hut. I've heard the same rumour. Yeah, probably from you. Might be from you. Yeah. <laughs> So, it's used by lots of big, important companies and organisations who can't afford to mess around. So, it makes it quite good for a system that I want to use, because I don't want my computer to be going too mental either. I want to be using the same stuff as a German embassy. So, that brings us on to Plasma 5. We've just made a new release, which is exciting. About six months ago, we had our 5.0. And as you can imagine, with a big release, it has some breakages, it has some fallout. But we're rapidly improving now. Every three months we're having a new release. And the reason we're doing this now is in a few weeks, we're releasing Plasma 5.2. We had a beta today, and that builds on what we had previously. So we're constantly improving what we have in Plasma 5. So what's new in Plasma 5? So the main thing underneath it that's changed is we're now, instead of being built in Qt 4, we're built in Qt 5. And Qt's our underlying libraries that do mostly the graphical work, and it's a really fundamental part of how we're built. So it was an opportunity for us to revisit and rechange things, and we had to do a lot of work just to make things still work. So that's been where we've been for the last year, being paused in construction mode, trying to make everything still work with this new technology, this new platform. And we have a new visual design group. This is just one of the things they created, where they made a nice colour palette that's now the default for Plasma 5, and they spent ages arguing what names to call each colour. And we have this visual design team who are coming up with new ideas, new polishing. They're doing most of the new artwork that we saw on Plasma 5, this new style with the slightly flat look, which is now uh, in fashion. That's come from this visual design team. And they have a forum where we're really trying to get more designers involved and get designers to have a platform where they can state their opinion that we can listen to and react to. So visual design, we're really clearing it up. If you've used Plasma 4, you'll see everything's now a lot more polished and clean and tidy. So new features. There's now a one-click place where you can just change all of the different parts of your theme at once. It changes your plasma theme, it changes the widget theme, it changes the login screen, it can change your sound theme. It can change all these different parts of your theme all at once. It can include fonts, it can include colour schemes. One-click place, press a new button, changes everything. So you can even change it back to how it looks on our last release in Plasma 4, with just one click, system settings, click right and click on your old name. So that's quite nice. Another feature we have is sometimes we have different widgets which duplicate functionality. So there's an analog clock and there's a digital clock. And we have a fuzzy clock as well, where instead of saying 16.30, it would say 4.30 p.m. and it works. And then it rounds it off. So it stops you looking at the clock constantly when you're having a bad day at work, because it's not changing. And apparently that's meant to be better in some psychological study. So we have all these different types of clocks. And previously, when you wanted to change a clock, you would click on a clock, remove it, then open your widget explorer, find the other clock, and drag it into exactly the same place. And that's quite tedious, particularly if you're just flicking through and trying to find the one you want. We now have this feature, right click, hover over a menu code all the alternatives, and it will list all the different plasmoids which operate, the same, which give you the same feature. So it will list all the different clocks, you can just switch between them. And it will just Take out the old clock, put in a new clock. And the same for your application launcher, where you start a little menu where you choose your application. Two clicks, you change which one it is. 
So that's something that we've wanted to do for a while, Plasma 5 is an opportunity to make that happen. And a quite a boring sounding feature, but really useful, an undo button. You delete the panel that you spent hours configuring, you now have an undo button, brings it all back to exactly how it was before. So that's useful and exciting. I tried that with the club yesterday. And it worked perfectly. <laughs> very, very nice of you to say. Another thing that's, that's cool is the way we're doing drawing now is exactly the same technology as used in games. So from a hardware point of view, these are identical. Need for Speed Underground and, uh, and Plasma, except one crashes more. And uh, it's really useful to use the same technology because graphic cards, it turns out, are really good at graphics. Who would have thought? So instead of us drawing everything on a pixel basis that we used to do, we're doing the same te technology that games use, where we just say, here's a texture, here's where I want you to pick the texture, and the graphic card does it itself. As a processor, we can now get back on with calculating other things. So it makes everything faster, and we can get the same sort of performance that games get. Because games are doing this 2D overlays, which is the part we're using, this 2D side, and they can achieve 60 frames per second whilst doing lots of other things. And we want the same in our shell. When you have an animation, even if it's just a subtle blend or something sliding in, we want 60 frames a second without any glitching, without any artifacts. And by not doing everything one pixel at a time, but by using OpenGL to do all of the hard work, we're really getting a performance boost. And if you read our reviews, they're constantly saying everything's fast, everything's even faster, even though that's the main change we did. Which is good. And even old computers will still have graphic cards which can handle simple games, which is the part that we're using, it's 2D library. And what we have now with, with Plasma 5 is trying to get close integration with system services. Previously, I think we distanced ourselves with some of the things that we considered was the job of the distribution, so installing software or adding and removing users. We weren't very good at that before, and now I think there's a push within Plasma 5 to try and improve this. So this is landing in Plasma 5.2, we have a software center where we can just download add-ons and download new applications with a simple to use interface. And underneath it uses a platform for that particular distribution in exactly the same way as a distribution would, but it provides the same graphical interface across different distributions, to putting us in control of this. And it means we can do something better than before. So, exciting part, what's coming in Plasma 5? What are we going to see in Plasma 5.3, Plasma 5.4 and beyond? High DPI, as it's shown in this icon. We have support in Plasma, our main shell scales nicely uh, if you have a higher DPI screen, a higher resolution screen, everything will just resize. And we're using a font size as a metric of how big should everything be. If a font is 20 pixels, we just make our icons relatively bigger because you're going to choose a font size that matches what your computer is actually capable of. So in Plasma, where we controlled all of the system, we were able to implement this high DPI support quite easily, and it works quite well. And there's a few people with fancy screens who can attest to it. But we also have a lot of our legacy applications which are still pixel based, and they're drawing things pixel by pixel. And when you just throw a bigger screen at them, it still draws it pixel by pixel, which just makes everything really small. And it's quite hard to just magically make that work. But it's a new piece of technology that's landed which allows us to make that possible, where it will take any coordinate you give it and automatically scale it. And then even though you tell it to draw between pixels 0 and 10, it will request a graphic which is 20 pixels wide. And then it will do the scaling, it will just use a correct asset in the bigger pixel size. It separates that concept of device pixels and real pixels. So that's something that's still a work in progress because it needs applications to update a little bit. But it's something we should see coming in the next few months. And as I've mentioned before, we have the Visual Design Group, who, as well as making assets that we're using now and making artwork, they're also brainstorming new ideas. So this is their way of reducing a space that you might see 
for an application where we have a window bar on the top with a close and maximize and the title, and then it's nothing. They're playing with some experimentation of what if we put some extra controls in here, and they're doing the mock-ups, coming up with ideas on how we can solve some of these problems so basically we can implement them. And the VDG are working on a VDG visual design group are working on a few of these different ideas that we're going to explore. And we're working mostly on making it enterprise grade quality again. We've seen that German embassies use it. They're not going to take any nonsense. We don't want a tank rolling up at the Barcelona office. So we need to make sure that Plasma 5 gets back to the same level of stability and being polished that we want. In fact, a good better level than we were before. And that's something we're really striving for with Plasma 5. And that's a priority now, making sure that after that big change with uh, where your graphics work and it changes in Qt. Yeah, we still work and we don't have any bugs. We fix all those bugs and we fix any of the existing bugs. Now we're using a batic technology which can. Ooh. <laughs> um, a bit of mining. Um, trying it out. There's a new there's an ISO available with a disk image which you can install or just it's a live CD so you can try it. And if you can remember this URL, you can download this and it will give you a very, very latest snapshot of Plasma 5 as we're working on it, so you can see development as it happens. And if you look at different distributions, coming in April, a uh, new version of Kubuntu will have Plasma 5.2 on there, ready for you to try. So I assume you all have questions? Does anyone have any questions? How about the OpenGL? Um, how does it work on all systems that might have to use Mesa for um, software-based GL? So, as you pointed out, it goes through a software-based GL. So we're still you're not getting much of a hit because it's no worse than doing it in software anyway. So it's comparable. And a bold claim from a corner that Mesa is better optimized because you know, it's designed for this one thing. So everything still works. We've, we have, a, you've seen the collection of netbooks we have in the office. A lot of them are not to newest because we're on a budget. And things still work. But as you say, you won't get all of the benefits. What about speed? What does it compare against the other emerging systems? Quite well. I mean, uh, because no, very few of the others are using OpenGL, so we're actually, in terms of animations and stuff, as a starter, but obviously there's some other factors that come into play. So you'll find a desktop environment that does less will be faster because it does less. But we do more things because they're important, like one, making sure you still have enough free disk space, or coming up with notifications, all the different extra levels. So my PC, it has a dual core 2 gigahertz system and it is blazingly fast. So it's fast, fast enough. I mean, to see on your hardware, the only way is to try it. But the feedback we're getting, because I look at all your comments on every social media site, is it's fast, it's fast, it's fast. Yeah, I'm using it here and it's pretty crap. It's not fast, but for the crap it is, it's pretty good. Uh, he means the hardware, not plasma. Just yeah, yeah. <laughs> plasma is fast. Yeah, and there's, a, there's still some optimizations we know about to do that will make it even faster. So if it's okay on his hardware, it should be good. And how, how about, uh, how about uh, having plasma in tablets? Or... That's a good question. I, I focused here on the desktop stuff because mm -hmm. it's where we clearly have, it's where we have existing users. And it's where most people are interested because they want to know where's my desktop going to end up. There is still work going on for the tablet and mobile side. I mean, a lot of the underlying technology is the same. So as we improve this, that, plasma, that mobile side and tablet side has improved because every mobile now has a really decent graphic card. So it's offloading to OpenGL. That's really helped. Yeah. But more than that, uh, I ask that uh, because not not uh, exactly only for the tablets, but uh, uh, even these days, more PCs have tablet screen, for instance, and 
you can convert uh, this yeah, you can tap and it and detach the screen. And I tried in the past the uh, Plasma 4 for tablets and uh -huh. it uh, didn't work quite well. Yeah. Okay. We, we've had a student, um, well, someone in the team, take the existing tablet shell and convert it onto Plasma 5. I've not seen it running, but I've seen the commit messages to know it has happened. Mm. And one part of code that we have in the shell perhaps um, running at the moment is it detects if there's a mouse and keyboard plugged in, and it has code in there that when that mouse and keyboard get removed, or some other criteria that we can invent afterwards, it can unload the shell it has at the moment and reload everything in a different configuration. And we've seen how flexible Plasma was and it is. So we have that code in there to dynamically replace everything. So we've definitely made the right stepping stones in the right direction. We've ported this tablet thing and we have this concept of being able to switch between the two different modes at one time. But putting all those together into something releasable is a part that um, we've not really done yet because we want to get the, I want to get the desktop side done first. Do we actually have a on screen keyboard for the tablet mode? Um, we use an external software called Mallet. Ah. So yes. But we have our own built on top of Mallet. So we have one. Yeah. So yes. So that's the company. How many people are working on uh, last month? Okay, so as a KD is part of a community, and it's a large community of volunteers, plus some companies. So as a community, in terms of the number of people who have committed over the last 12 months, it's in the region of 1,000, or who have done our commit, our change in the applications and stuff. And it's formed of lots of different companies that have an investment within that. So a team that make an email client, they get contracts to do email side things, and they invest themselves heavily in that application so they can self-support contracts and deployment contracts. The company I work for, Blue Systems, we work on the Plasma shell quite a lot. I'm employed to do that at the moment. And we have five people working on this shell at the moment on, on Plasma. Um, and our company size is around 15. In Red Hat, they have an investment in it because they sell support contracts to some of those big names you saw earlier. And they've got an investment on it, they don't want to make sure it's bad, so they, they've taken control of some different parts. They said, we'll take responsibility for these parts in our company time. And so this odd exchange of these, all these different companies working together and each company benefiting in their own way. Because the more a company invests, the more it can shape it and tweak it in a way that it suits them. Yeah, I was wondering if, uh, if it's going to last. I mean, if I change the <laughs> right, yeah. operating system, I don't do that very often. Yeah, that's fair enough. Um, well, our last release didn't really have many companies involved. I saw it a few companies involved. It, it would take a lot of companies to fall before there was no companies involved. And even if there were no companies involved, it started off as a community effort. In 98. I've been here for a while. Yeah. Yeah, so we're 16 years old? 17 years old. 15. I'm not very good at maths. Math. And, yeah, so I don't think it will be a huge problem. But I don't want any company to fold, particularly my one. <laughs> okay, I think that's it for me. If anyone wants to see a live demo, have any specific questions, I'll have my laptop around and we can go through some specifics. And there's beer. And there's beer. But there's and there are many members who work on different parts of Plasma over here, so... That's true, yeah. If we don't have more questions, this is the Plasma thing. <laughs> Sorry? They work in KD. And you can ask them questions in the beers, but the beers are in the other room. Yes. It's really important to make a lot of noise while we go in that room. <laughs> <laughs>
So yeah, um, we will see each other in the next meetup and we'll see you. If you want to have beers, we can go there. I don't know if it's ends. We should go. No, thank you. So thank you for coming and we'll see each other in the next meetup. And thank, thank you, you David. Thanks, David.